look up there. Beautiful sun, beautiful pullout morning. Two more dive sites you haven't seen, we're out of here. Well, yesterday I went to a site that uh, Daniel hasn't been and showed him something. Today he's bringing me to a site that I haven't seen ever. It's called the Virgin Blue Holes. Okay, this Virgin Blue Holes is a nice dive, okay? But to tell you straight, it's not a guarantee that we're gonna see a virgin. All right, anyway, you wanna see how close we are to Virgin Blue Hole? It's right there. You start at about 15 to 20 feet, go over and go right straight down, and you actually open at about 100 feet, and then you can work your way right back up the wall. I think that, you know, like our cave dives yesterday where, you know, you get through a certain point and then you see the light at the end of the tunnel, uh -huh. right? Nice view dropping down uh -huh. into the, to the hole. Very little darkness going in. I think the thing that got me the most was as you come out, the top of the arch there is yep. like a bonsai garden. It, all, you see all these nice things that you see on a wall, but it's in miniature. Beautiful, huh? It's gorgeous. But it's uh, good also for those guys who really love to go a little bit deeper. You know what? It didn't matter there were no virgins because there was so much to see. <laughs> They've already told you about what it's like going in the blue hole, but I want to talk about the second part, and it's about 75 yards, a little bit more north of where we went. It's a series of crevices and openings and swim-throughs and overhangs that the light is almost always above you. The way the sun's rays come down and that beautiful effect of that constant shimmering and movement of the rays in combination with layers of soft coral, yellow, reds, and greens, uh, is pretty spectacular. For those of you that like photography or videography, you will spend a lot of time at that place because number one, it's extremely easy. You can get all kinds of bottom time and you can get an awful lot of good subject matter in just one dive site. I even liked it better than the, the, the Virgin Blue Hole. I mean, it was that good. On our last video trip, one of the things that I wanted to make sure happened is we went to Blue Corner with no current. So let me take a minute to show you why. Blue Corner in Palau is probably one of the top 10 dive sites in the world. Actually, it's a corner that comes out. This is like a 50, 60 foot level. Drops down to well over 180. But the great thing that happens at Blue Corner when there's a current, it comes up very deep right up this wall and sweeps over the top. It either goes this way or it goes this way. When that happens, you see a ton of activity right here on where the corners are. If you're a photographer and you're hooked in right at the edge of that reef, those sharks and big animals are like six and seven feet in front of you. But if you use that little zoom capability you have or a telephoto lens, those sharks appear to be right here. An entirely different dive at Blue Corner is right in this area here, and that's when there's very little or no current. And what happens is all of these jacks and all these barracudas and some of the white-tipped sharks and turtles and everything else that's out here all go up here. So you're able to spend a lot more time with them, have a shallower dive, and get a whole bunch of pictures. So really, Blue Corner is two different dives, both world-class.
you know, this was my first time at Blue Corner and uh, I was a bit apprehensive about the current because I had never been in a situation where I needed a reef hook. But because there was no current, the place was swarming with marine life. So even before we could see the reef as we were going down, there were schooling fish everywhere. actually some small barracudas right in front of my nose, which I didn't realize till Pete pointed it out to me. So I thought I'd just play along with this school and see where it led. And then I looked over on the other side of the school of barracuda and there was a videographer there just filming away. I was swimming on one side, the videographer was on the other side. We just cruised along for a while in this school of three to four foot cudas. It was really cool. And so after I peeled away from the barracudas, I could see the reef, so I headed on down and saw this big school of grunts. If you put me anywhere near a school of those guys, I just gotta work my way around them and try to hang with them as long as I could. And then my peripheral vision off to the left caught this silver flash, sort of a blob and it was like shimmering, shimmering, getting bigger and bigger, and lo and behold, it was a big school of jacks, maybe three, four hundred fish. Then the primal instincts kicked in, because if you put me in a school of jacks, first thing I think about is lunch. Well, we finally did encounter a little bit of current, and Daniel, our excellent guide, showed me how to use the reef hook. He was very patient and he hooked me into the reef, said, just inflate your BC a little bit. And so there I was watching Pete film the Eagle Ray. I sure do. Can you send me an Eagle Ray? Okay, two minutes, over there. Oh man, outstanding. Please, 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 please. The big thing for me was uh, that eagle ray because there's a cleaning station there and it kept circling and it reminded me of the mantas and yap that they keep circling around and coming back to the same station. So I looked over and there was this one, uh, one other diver so I kind of worked around that person. You know, I've been diving with an awful lot of manta rays that give you the ability to, to, to learn what they're going to do and then you can work your way in and get right above them and, because they actually can't see you and kind of drop down on top of them. I've never done it with an eagle ray until today. In all these years of diving, I was probably two feet above it and able to get that downward shot. I've also never seen an eagle ray keep coming back and, and getting so close to everybody. Man, I've been to Blue Corner an awful lot, but that was really special. All in all, I have to say that was a great first trip to Blue Corner, but now I'm ready to go back when there's a current so I can really see what it's like then. <laughs>